Hello, my name is Adam Winstock and I'm the founder and director of the Global Drug Survey. And in the next few minutes, um, we're going to talk a little bit around the synthetic cannabinoid products and the work that Global Drug Survey has been doing for the last two or three years. Now, Global Drug Survey never passes judgment on any sort of drug at all. But I think I've got to say that as a group of drugs, synthetic cannabis products just aren't nice. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, the data I'm going to share with you now is based on those people who took part in Global Drug Survey 2015. That was over 100,000 people from around the world. Um, and they really did come from around the world. Um, lots of people from Europe, a lot of people from America and Australasia. And we want to say thank you to every single one. Now, some of the data I'm going to talk about um, is going to be comparing the rates of uh, drug use across countries. And it's really important that you recognize there's some limitations when you use our data to compare prevalence rates. And that's because the size of our samples and the representativeness of our samples vary across different countries. And certainly for some of the countries I'm going to talk about, we only had five or 600 people. So take some of the findings with a little bit of uh, salt, but the really takeaway findings from this talk, I think they're going to come across loud and clear. So synthetic cannabis products have been floating around since about 2004. They came to prominence in 2008. Um, Spice was the one that really nailed the market. But what we basically got is a bunch of inert herbal materials that are sprayed with synthetic cannabinoid products. These are um, full THC receptor agonists. You dissolve the powders in acetone, spray them on some herbal material, pack it up and flog it for a fortune. Now, Global Drug Survey over the last four years has probably conducted the largest studies in the world on the synthetic cannabis products. And so far, there were three really strong findings that um, I think we've shown. The first is that given the choice, over 93% of the people prefer the effects of natural weed to synthetic cannabis. People say that on synthetic cannabis, they get much higher rates of paranoia, memory loss, agitation. Lovely. The second thing is that there was a really high rate of people seeking emergency medical treatment. Um, when we first started looking at this, the rate was 2.2%. Last year, it went up to 2.5%. This year, it's gone up to 3.5%. And in March of 2015, we published a paper that suggested that the risk of seeking emergency medical treatment when you use synthetic cannabis is 30 times higher than when using high potency cannabis. So um, this year we thought we're going to take all of that work a step further and we're going to look at exactly how the market shifted and what the impacts are because the truth is that the synthetic cannabis products remain the fastest growing group of novel psychoactive drugs out there with more of these being notified to agencies than any other drugs. But as I've said, just because they're out there, it doesn't mean that people like them. And drugs that make you more paranoid and affect your memory, I don't know. They're just not that great. Drugs that get you into A&E departments, just not that great. And in fact, the people who present to A&E departments on synthetic cannabis products don't just present there more frequently, but they present there with much more severe symptoms, visual hallucinations, serious aggression, seizures. And we'd never see that with people who are taking natural cannabis. It also takes people much, much longer to recover when they've used synthetic cannabis and turned up to A&E. So you can see that you've got about 30% of people who are taking over two weeks to recover when something bad has happened, um, when they've used synthetic cannabis products. Interestingly though, there didn't seem to be any difference in people's risk of seeking emergency medical treatment um, depending on their self-reported history of a mental illness. We're going to keep an eye on that because everything I know as a psychiatrist says to me that people who have a history of a severe mental illness are much more vulnerable to the um, harmful effects of cannabis. One of the things that really stood out last year was that you were more likely to end up in an A&E department or the ER room after using synthetic cannabis than any other drug. And 
One of the problems is that when you present in an A&E department and they think, hey, you look like you've taken the drug, what's on? And they dip your urine, actually it doesn't show up. And that's because there are simply so many of these drugs. And they are changing in preparation. We're seeing resin present presentations, we're seeing powders. But I guess the bit that really stands out for me this year is that once again, synthetic cannabis products were the drugs that were most likely to land you in an accident and emergency department. If you just look at that, you know, 3.5% of last year users, you know, over three times the rate for most other drugs. And if you also remember, that's an increase in from about 30% from last year's rate, which was around 2.5% of users. So I don't think the problems are going away. I think the problems are getting worse. Um, in terms of prevalence, though, it still remains a bit of a minority occupation. Um, less than 2% of our sample have actually used these products in the last year. The sorts of product they're using are still predominantly herbal, but we are starting to see people use powders and resins and oils. Those oils can go in vaporizers that could deliver a really big dose of a really potent drug really quickly. Prevalence rates did vary widely. And remember what I said about comparing rates, but really there does seem to be something pretty much stand out around Eastern European countries with those really high rates seen in Hungary and Poland. The high rate in New Zealand, of course, is that they had a regulated market there until um, the middle of 2014. So what I want to share now is stuff that I think is absolutely groundbreaking and I think is really important for people to know. And this is based on the global data of about 1,500 or so last year users of synthetic cannabinoid products from around the world. So the first thing is to say that most people are getting them from a friend. Um, sometimes they're getting them from shops. And the average price when you're buying them online is about eight euros. That's comparing to around 12 euros a gram for high potency herbal cannabis. Um, as I've said, herbal preparations remain the most common and not surprisingly, smoking it in a joint, often with tobacco, remains the most common use of using these drugs. What's really interesting is the number of joints that people report getting out of a gram of synthetic cannabis, which is about 10, which is about three times what you get out of a gram of normal um, high potency cannabis. So I think we're looking here bang for buck. These drugs are more potent, people are getting more joints. Um, and value for money is kind of important. But of course, a cheaper drug is no good if actually what's happening is you're landing yourself in an accident emergency department. So of the 1,500 people who took part in the survey and had used synthetic cannabis, 43 of them had um, ended up seeking emergency medical treatment. Almost everyone had smoked the product. Um, and a lot of them, you know, recovered fairly quickly, about a quarter of them within six hours, but a lot of them took much longer. And they're presenting with some of the things we see with cannabis use, like panic and nausea, you know, anxiety symptoms, but really high rates of um, agitation, feeling terribly scared, um, being unable to talk. 15% presenting with seizures is a really huge number and is a really big risk because people can die if, if they, they fit. But I think the thing that really struck us was the incredible relationship between how frequently people were using synthetic cannabis drugs and the risk of seeking emergency medical treatment. So for people who'd used more than 100 times, it was one in eight had reported seeking emergency medical treatment. That sort of graph, where the more frequently you use a drug, the more likely you are to end up in A&E, when you see something that steep, it reminds me of a drug like methamphetamine. And that, for me, is a really worrying finding. So I think, so far, everything I've said so far just confirms what we said before, is that actually synthetic cannabis products are way more dangerous um, and carry a far greater risk, at least in the short term, compared to natural cannabis. But this year, we took our work a step further, and we wanted to look at the risk of people developing dependence and withdrawal. And so this is um, people who'd used synthetic cannabis products more than 50 times in the last year and said that they'd ever tried to stop. 
And we asked those people, well, did you get any withdrawal symptoms? And what you can see is a really high incidence here of what looks like severe cannabis withdrawal. People reporting low mood, irritability, difficulty sleeping, craving, palpitations. These are the sorts of things that you see uh, in cannabis users, but they're the sorts of things I'd expect to see in heavy daily cannabis users, not people who just move, use more than 50 times. This says to me that these drugs don't just carry an acute risk, but they also carry a risk of dependence. So I guess what Global Drug Survey would say to people out there is if you like getting stoned, um, pick something that grows out of the ground, and preferably that's got a bit of CBD in it. Um, if you've got a mental health problem, steer well clear of all of those things. But the synthetic cannabis products, there's nothing in the work that we've done over the last four years, looking from thousands of users, um, that says these things are nice. And I think our message is um, don't take them. Keep your eye open for all the media coverage of our findings, uh, which are coming out on June the 8th, 2015. Until then, keep you and your mates safe.